as 20 somethings, uh, we grew up in. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Try to make yourself seem young again. I, you know, I gotta hold on to it. I, I was a teenager like two months ago, man. <laughs> Welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on The Nexus. I am your host, Ian Arbuck, and today I will be joined by Mary Austed so we can share our experiences with an absolutely remarkable thing. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO53. So Mary, there was this book that came out a little over a month ago. What? Yeah. And it has a great title, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. Which has confused a few people when I talked to them about it. <laughs> like my dad, I, I told him that I've been reading this book and it's an absolutely remarkable thing. And he's like, okay, but what's it called? And I was like, yes. Don't give long explanations. Just to be say it's a book. It's a book. Yeah. Um, although, I mean, I think the, the long explanation of what this book is, like what the concept of it is fantastic. Um, so before we get too far into it, uh, listeners, just want to let you know that since this is like a fictional book that we are reviewing, um, we're going to structure the review as spoiler-free section first, and then we'll get into the spoilers in the second half of the, the episode, and we'll like give you a lot of warning. There'll be like a musical interlude or whatever. Um, and you can also look in the show notes and see what the timestamp for that is uh, so that you don't get surprised. Um but okay, so spoiler-free stuff uh, about this book. The concept of the book is that it's like a, an exploration, an analysis of fame and like internet culture, but it's wrapped in a sci-fi mystery. The spark notes that I read confirms that. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I, you, you couldn't come up with like a more out of left field sounding like summary than that but it's good because it intrigues you yeah 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 like there's robots and then i'm like okay Mm -hmm. yeah sign me up where do i read it (laughs) um my the thing that that got me to sign up right away was the just the fact that it's by hank green um and like i'm interested in basically everything that he makes really i originally wasn't even gonna buy the book and then like i changed my mind one day hmm because I saw someone was going to Milwaukee, and I'm like, that would be fun. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I wasn't even, like, I had not even, like, thought about pre-ordering the book or anything, like I had for John's book, and I was like, oh, I'll just wait till it comes out and read it after, like, I don't okay. know, paperback comes out, and I'm like, oh, I should go on a road trip, that's cool, so I better <laughs> read this book. That's so funny. So, what Mary's uh, referencing there is the fact that we found each other in the, like, Twin Cities Nerd Fighters group. Uh, because I was looking for a ride to Milwaukee to go to Hank's book tour. Um, I was originally trying to go with the Christian girl, but she didn't yeah. want to go with us. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't and, know. Yeah. I think she was just thought it was just with you and was like, oh, don't meet a stranger right. on the internet and drive many miles with them. Yeah. Yeah. I was cool with that, though. But you had, yeah, you had no qualms. So so basically what, what happens in this book, um, the the, like plot summary of the beginning of the book right Mm -hmm. uh is that we've got our main character whose name is april may um hank i'm still a little bit mad that you named her april may (laughs) (laughs) like i understand it was originally supposed to be a children's book though okay didn't you know april may pet detective (laughs) oh that was the original what it was supposed to be (laughs) and then it He's like, oh, I'll just make her grown up. That's right. And he kept that pet detective angle in there a little Love bit that. as well. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So there is still, I guess, the possibility of writing some like April, May There's definitely pet gonna detective be a books. Prequel. Prequel. Yeah. I'm ready for it. There you go. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you when you changed it from being like not a children's book anymore, you can change the names of the characters. It's allowed. No, you're attached to the names. <laughs> yeah, I guess you might be. You I've never written a book, so. Never written a book? No. The next project. So this character, April May, um, she is a young woman. I think, what was she, like 22, 23 in 22. the book? 22. Yeah. Um, fresh out of college. Fresh out of college. Uh, so she is working at some startup, and she's like walking home in the middle of the night one time, and she she like walks by this big cool statue, and she's like, "Whoa, that's a big cool statue!" And so <laughs> she decides that like the thing to do is to make a video about it, because you know, 
as you do. 2018, man. It's probably better than an unboxing video, honestly. Well, she like, was like, people should appreciate this. And like, she's yeah. like, I almost walked past this. But and, like, and, and like, I've n- I haven't seen anybody else talking about, about this, this thing. So like, might as well. I'm ready to be Instagram famous, guys. Yeah. Um, except that uh, instead of putting it up on Instagram, because I think she, she put- specifically says, I don't do Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> um, she grabs one of her friends and they make a video about it and they put it up on YouTube. And um, that would have been just fine, all well and good, uh, except that, as it turns out, these this statue is one of 64 identical statues that all appeared at the exact same time in the 64 largest metro areas on Earth. And nobody knows what they are. Nobody knows what they're about. And because, like, April, May, and Andy were the only two people who had, like, made a video about yeah, it like so the far. First. Who had, yeah, yeah. Like, they became kind of the default just, like, people to interview for, you know, that that news corporations were doing. So, they kind of became notorious and attached to Carl. these. Carl. Yeah. She named the, yeah, she, she named the statue Carl. Um, I, I can't believe that nobody made any llama jokes in the in the book or anything. <laughs> because that's what I kept thinking. He's waiting for the sequel, man. You gotta Carl. save something. Um, <laughs> Carl, did you... Carl. <laughs> no spoilers. I'll have to I'll have to put that in the spoiler section. <laughs> but yeah, so they get they become a little bit famous at that point and they just kind of like the snowballs from there, you know, because like once you're a little bit famous, it's easier to become more and more famous because fame is like money and once you have yeah. a little bit of it, you can like But use... they make the decision to become famous. They do. Yes. I mean, just like with money, like you have to make the decision to use your money to make more money. That's true. If you just put it in a mattress, then it's not going to this episode is also about finance now. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Planet Money. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like like this this central theme of the book where it's like, I think the book is much more about like fame and internet culture than it is about science fiction. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And like so many of the times where like... So we'll we'll have like stretches of the book where we're getting like, you know, the story's advancing, plots happening and yeah. stuff, you know. And then and then April will have like, you know, I don't know, three pages or so. I was listening to the audiobook, so I don't have any a good <laughs> metric for how long it is on on pages. Um but like, you know, she'll monologue at directly at the audience, right? Yeah. Cuz it's it's written in a first person and she's like writing to an audience who is like She's writing to an in-universe audience, which is, which is interesting, yeah. you know, like, and so she references these past events that the audience already knows about from her, per, like, from yeah. her perspective, which is an interesting uh, choice. I know. I liked it because it really made you, like, yeah. connect with April yeah. in a way that mm. I don't know if I would have. That's good because that's, that's another aspect of, like, internet fame is, like, trying to connect with an audience yes. and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but what was I saying? Oh yeah. So she'll she'll have like you know just a stretch where where she'll talk to the audience about like yeah. So this is he- here's like some of the ways that being famous makes your mind weird and like you know <laughs> strange things happen. Uh, and and every time that that one of those things happened, like I just I I sat up and I went yeah I can hear Hank's voice saying these exact oh, same yeah, things like, like just <laughs> if you've ever watched his videos it's all like yeah yeah very him this this feels like a vlog brothers video script <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's just like oh wrote the script maybe i'll write a book too <laughs> <laughs> yep which is why when we were in milwaukee and we were you know asked to write down some questions that was basically my question for hank was like if like were there any times where you wrote something as like a video script but then went no, wait, I'm going to I'm going to save that for the book. Um and I think his answer was yes. It was. And yes. you and he knew who you were and Yes. You had that fangirl moment oh, and I'm God. like I'm why did I not record it? I think I need to tell that story now. <laughs> so here's what happened. <laughs> so Mary and I went down to Milwaukee and like I had bought the ticket like really really early. Um, cause I wanted to be one of the VIPs who get, like, gets to meet Hank ahead of time and get a picture taken with him and everything. Um, and so, you know, I go to the, the meet and greet and, you know, like have a two sentence interaction with him, take a picture and then leave. Cause like anything other than two sentences, I wouldn't have been able to keep my cool. <laughs> um, but I did, I kept my cool. I swear I was totally chill. It was fine. <laughs> 
but yeah, so so we got our pictures taken, and then like, uh, and then we went and grabbed some seats in you know for the main event, the main yeah. stage event, and uh, and we saved a seat for you. So yeah, they won't let me in. Yeah, <laughs> I was a Cause, VIP because you're not a VIP. Also bought the week ticket like the week before, so not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we had really good seats. Yeah, it was, it was second row, and um, and when they were you know reading off questions from the audience my question was one of the ones that got picked and so dessa who is of course the, the coolest person in the world um she read my question and then said that question's from ian and i was like woo you woo. know so that they could see where i was um and hank looks at me and he goes is your last name buck <laughs> and like on the outside i was like yeah but like on the inside i'm going what the fuck is going on what the fuck is going on <laughs> and and he was like have we met before and i was like i mean like an hour ago at the meet and greet and he was like no no before that like are you like active on twitter and i was like yeah pretty <laughs> active on twitter and he was like oh well thanks for being active and then he like looks me dead in the eyes and he goes i know your family has been going through some, some <laughs> tough stuff right now and i'm like <laughs> what like like i'm like i go cold inside i was like how, he, he cuz like like the only thing that i could think of was like he must be referencing the car accident that my family was in back in december but like how would he know and i was like how, when did he notice me when like cuz i hadn't been talking on twitter about the car accident in a yeah. very long time um so i was like there's no way that he remembered this all the way from back in like january or whatever um why would he even be seeing my tweets about that it wasn't until after the show that i remembered that i had connected like a moment in the book with how i felt about the car accident and had posted that in the discord server for an absolutely remarkable thing <laughs> which hank evidently had been you know monitoring had been you know reading, yeah, reading. what people say which is totally reasonable right yeah. you know because uh, that's where like the the main fan discussion was happening about the book yeah. in the week after it came out um and yeah apparently like the, my my story was like notable enough for him to remember it and and still have that connected with my yeah. last name i was like whoa um and so like that's like i think that really connects with the theme of the book hilariously <laughs> because like that's the kind of the obviously he's writing it from the other perspective of like you know this famous person who is um you know that they'll have an interaction with somebody who they know nothing about but that person knows everything about them which is yeah yeah um and i also got to use that story uh in my class the next week because we were learning about that exact thing because I teach a podcasting class and so like I also in addition to all the, the technical details of how to make a podcast uh, I get into a lot of the like economic and social and you know yeah things that you should understand if you want to be a creator and might accidentally become famous yeah. so <laughs> I'm really worried about that my 20 followers and I on Instagram yeah We're exactly <laughs> <laughs> what else can we say about this book that isn't spoilery? We can talk about some of the characters. Um, All right. I mean, there's there's April May, of course, who's like, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like we don't really get a good sense of like like what most of the other characters are about, you know? Yeah. Because we're getting all of this through, through April May's perspective. perspective. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't like her. Yeah. Well, she seems n not very intuitive about relationships yeah and like like what's going on in other people's minds i just thought that was like a human thing like, maybe there's yeah definitely people who i know who aren't good at oh, reading signs sure for sure i can relate to it a lot like i have no idea what most like how most of my friends would react to x thing happening yeah yeah um but that i mean i feel like that is the kind of thing that like the kind of skill that you would want if you are going to try to grow an audience because then you know like yeah understanding although that's more understanding like people in aggregate not understanding it's, a specific person yeah which yeah. is a lot harder yeah um but yeah we've got like <clears throat> most of the main characters in this book are very very young um it's a bunch of i'm like, sorry they're very very old shut up sorry old person as a young 20 something and by that i mean 20 <laughs> they're all old and out of college 
What wisdom they must have. Uh, what debt mu- they must have. <laughs> this book, this is like the first book that has legitimately made me feel old. Because like, there was a specific line that Hank put in the book to emphasize how, just how young all of these characters are. Yeah. Where he said, nobody in the car was over 25 years old. And when I when <laughs> when I read that, I was like, my 26th birthday is in two weeks. You're basically 30. Uh, you round up if you didn't know that yet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm, at least I can still s- s- claim that I'm in my mid-20s. Yeah. It's not until next a little, year. A little while longer. Yeah. Then you'll yeah. be in your 30s. Mm, don't speak of it. Don't speak of it? <laughs> I, did, I can't even comprehend that we're going to be in the 2020s soon. Oh, no. That seems crazy I to am me. ready for 2020 vision, though. No. What, uh, yes? <laughs> my favorite joke... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, thinking about most of these, yeah, most of these other characters, um, yeah, I don't have a super great sense of, of who they are, like, what what's going on in their heads. Um, have a, We have a really, really good sense of what's going on in April May's head. Yeah. You know? Um, Jeez, yeah. I think it's, I thought it was very, very funny the way that, like, most of the times that she was talking about a new person, she was, like, analyzing their attractiveness in front of the audience. But everyone you know? kind of does that, like, a little bit. Oh, for sure. It's just... Well, maybe. Okay, maybe there are definitely better people out there than me. But, like, <laughs> you look at someone, you, like, you think about it for, like, a second, and then it's out. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like she took it a little bit farther, though. She was, like, also analyzing the, like, likelihood of being able to hook up with that person yeah. and stuff, you know? <laughs> so I was like, all right, girl. All right, you live your best life. <laughs> um... And that was actually, like, another kind of tied into, not, not like, a, a super recurring theme in the book, but it was kind of a, a particular thing that happened um, where they, like, you know, a publicity-type person wanted to, you know, like, have April project a slightly different public persona than she actually is, you know, yeah. like, on her own. Um and so that was like, that that was that was a a, a po- poignant moment. How do you say that word? It was it was it was like a it was a very real moment yeah. because this that kind of thing definitely happens in mm. like not the marketing world but like in you know the the public relations Asian, world yeah yeah and like bisexual erasure is something that is definitely a big issue even today in 2018. I mean. um, and that was, you know, because because April May is bisexual, but like the the PR person wanted to. She was like, well, that's going to complicate the narrative. So, like, let's just make you gay. Just gay. <laughs> just um, pick one. <laughs> exactly. And it, so that was like, um, of course, like th- they didn't just have that happen. Like it wasn't like a one time event in the book. Right. No. It had ramifications later on, um, which was good. Like it was, you know. Yeah. Full circle. And it tells why. Mm-hmm. Things like that happen. Yeah, and it was, and and that's that's another you know scenario that happens in the real world as well. Is like, um, when when like pieces of you know the the facade kind of crack yeah. and people see through, and it's like okay now now we have to deal with you know this person in a different way. If you feel you know if if you feel weird about the thing that came out about them, yeah. right? So yeah, um. You know, they like he didn't take it all the way to the extreme of like, well, now we know that like this famous person is like, you know, a sexual predator or something like that, (laughs) which is, you know, if you wanted to take it to the extreme of what has happened in real life. uh, I thought it was like a very realistic thing to happen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, What he does, despite this being a sci fi book, like mm -hmm. I felt like it was very real in so many aspects of Internet culture and relationships and people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you, you know, I mean, a lot, a lot of like people who are like my parents age, who I've talked to about the book, uh, just kind of look at me quizzically when I tell them about like, these are the major themes in the book. And they're like, you know, is that something that I would be interested in? And, you know, they, they live in a very different world than I think you and I live in. Yeah. Um, because as 20 somethings, uh, we grew up in, (laughs) shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Try to make yourself seem young again. I, you know, I gotta hold on to it. I, I was a teenager like two months ago, man. 
Um, yeah, like, like we kind of grew up in a world where we have been able to have much closer interactions with the creators who we are interested in, right? Yeah. Um, even, you know, like, like that applies to, like, Hollywood-level fame actors yeah. as well, you know? Um, you probably, like, Chris Hemsworth probably wouldn't recognize my last name based on, you know, a tweet that I made a Maybe long not time ago you, or something but like that. me and Chris Hemsworth were sure. really close. Oh, yeah, you are tight, <laughs> Real right? Good friends. Yeah. Me and all the Hemsworths. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, like, you can still, like, get a lot more insight into Chris Hemsworth's life and, like, what he's up to and what he's talking about thanks to the social internet. The the book, uh, I feel like it's a pretty, like, a pretty quick quick read. Um, yeah. The audiobook was nine and a half hours. Um, the so. book itself, the physical hardcover is 338 pages. Um, wish I had a word count. I think it was a, yeah, it was a nice quick, quick read. Um, I wasn't like, like, I'm definitely looking forward to a sequel. Um, but it wasn't in, in a way where I was just like, like, I feel like it had a good arc on its own. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I wasn't upset by the ending cliffhanger kind of situation. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it felt pretty well-rounded. Like, I think he even talked about he said he could have finished it there. Oh, yeah. And not have a sequel? Yeah. Mm. I think I would have been satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. He just would have had to cut out the thing in the last chapter that made it like, you know, oh, hey, there's a sequel coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But up until then, yeah. Yeah. Um, The the audiobook itself, um, I liked the uh, the narrator that they got. Um, I it was a little bit goofy when she was like narrating the male voiced characters. Uh, she <laughs> she uh, doesn't do good accents. It's well, no, it's it's just like like the the effort that she puts forth to like you know make her voice lower, like well, well, it's Tom, it's time it's... to go to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it it did sound a little bit like a little bit hammy, you know, but um the you know, male characters don't have direct lines too often in no. the book, so it doesn't come up so super often. Um and that's something that I'm still not sure like I'm not sure which style of audiobook I like better, you know, do you have just one narrator who's doing different voices for all the different characters or do you have different voice actors for the different characters depends on how good the narrator is right like yeah. i prefer one if they're good mm-hmm. if it's not then probably it's better to have multiple yeah yeah um but yeah it was uh it was a good time um i definitely recommend the book it's i i recommend the book if you have any interest in like yeah the the weird things that happen in in internet culture and the weird ways that we interact with each other um and also if you know if you have any like creators that you are interested in and follow because this can like honestly give you some insight i think into like the the ways that they're forced to interact with us as well you know us normal people yeah, who, me just who don't at them. who don't make podcasts and <laughs> um any any other final spoiler free thoughts on the book? No. No. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we're gonna get into spoilers now. Don't stop me now. I'm having such a good time. I'm having a ball. Don't stop me now. If you wanna have a good time, just give me a call. Carl, did you turn that man into grape jelly? <laughs> Carl. <laughs> All right, so spoilers. Did you have anything specific that you wanted to delve into right away with with spoilers? Not particularly. No? Okay. Um, speaking of the ending of the book, it like I was very, very fascinated by the choice that Hank made where he had April like alluding to the fact that she dies a, but, at least a couple times. But does she die? In the book leading up to... Well, like... Like, she's alluding to the fact Six. that that everybody believes that she died, at least, yeah. right? You know, um, because she's writing this to an in-universe audience, audience who, you know, has experienced all of these events through the lens of, like, her YouTube channel or, or through whatever news Twitter, coverage yeah. they saw or through Peter What's-His-Futz's uh, book. Of course. Um, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and, and it was like, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I feel about the fact that I knew that she was going to die at the end long before we were anywhere near that happening. Um, but as you said, like, she's not permanently dead. Probably. I know. It's always interesting when authors kill off their main character. Yeah. 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 But then they usually, it's not really killing them off and you're like, oh. Right. Sorry, Bella. (laughs) One of the few examples of that that I can think of is like when George R. R. Martin killed off Ned Stark at the end of the first book yeah. in A Song of Ice and Fire. And that, like, everybody was surprised by that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. When I read that in sixth grade. <laughs> oh, my God. You were reading A Song of Ice and Fire in sixth grade? I was an advanced reader. I was reading That's these, crazy. like, 40-year-old women books in third grade. <laughs> my mom gave them to me. She's like, my friend gave them to me. I'm like, Mom, did you read them? She's like, no. And I'm like, there's a lot of sex in this book. <laughs> third grade Mary was pretty lit. <laughs> I think I was probably reading Animorphs. You're still reading I'm Animorphs. I'm still <laughs> reading Animorphs. It's very true. I'm on book nine right now. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know where I was going to go with that. I don't know. Um, oh, the, um, the the puzzles that were in the, the book. Those were really interesting. Oh, I love that, yeah. And, and I, um, like... So, so if you haven't read the book yet, but you don't care about spoilers and you're listening to the section, um, <laughs> what happens in the book is, like, they've got, th- like, these dreams that everybody's kind of, they're, like, shared dreams, and there are puzzles in this dream, and, you know, everybody comes to the conclusion, reasonably so, that, like, okay, these dreams are being caused by the Carls, and the the puzzles are giving us clues as to, like, whatever the carls want us to do next and um and so like they where where was i going with this oh yeah so like the fact that there are all these puzzles in in the book that you know the in-universe characters are dealing with made me think like hmm did hank put any puzzles in the book (laughs) that are like meta puzzles that are for us to figure out here in the real world um i'm pretty sure that he said no he said no yeah Yeah. or he answered that question at the chicago meet yeah okay yeah um which was disappointing yeah i mean that would have been a lot of effort to be fair he already does a lot like yeah it's very true they did at least give us you know a little bit of like a a fun easter egg to kind of play with in the the end the pages in between the 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 hardcover whatever those are called the little reedy thing yes what the words yes the yeah the words that appear on the the new york skyline yeah 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 um i also was was kind of thinking about the the dream puzzles um because like one of the things that he talks about is like oh yeah the, like these puzzles were designed to force us as a you know as an entire global society to like work together to solve them because like you'll have puzzles that combine knowledge from several different totally unrelated random things right you know yeah, like languages or mm-hmm. like different languages different cultures, cultures different like um or just knowledge you'd have if you played this instrument yeah d- different or... fields right yeah. yeah yeah um and but then like like most of the puzzles that we were actually presented the details of right in the book yeah. um were pretty clearly like geared towards like an american western audience yeah um and and i and i think that you know you can kind of say that okay those are the ones that like april may herself was interacting Interacting with with. um which you know makes sense um and like she was supposed to be like you know the the chosen one right who is like (laughs) had to go and do the final puzzle um which had to do with the song call me maybe um (laughs) and it's like you know and 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 that kind of like that like the the choice of like you know using don't stop me now and um call me maybe is like okay these are these are pop songs that you are going to be aware of like i i don't know how globally popular those two songs are. Well, the American music industry pretty much dominates around the world, like... Yeah, well, I mean, mean, Queen is British. Queen is British. But, like, you get what I'm saying. Like, if you're popular in America, you're probably popular 
it's like Hollywood. Like we do. Yeah. Other yeah. than Bollywood, we produce like the most. We we are very good at our uh, cultural colon- colonialism. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like it's I I mean, in some ways I I like I understand that of course Hank being an American author wouldn't really be able to write a a book where you know if if the if april may had not been you know from new york yeah if she had been like living in bangladesh or something like that right like yeah um by the way i looked at like the the wikipedia's list of like the largest metropolitan areas in the world and like there are only three in the top 64 like the, only three of them are in the united states yeah aren't a, like nine of them in china a lot of them are yeah yeah um and there's some really like surprising ones in very small countries where I'm like, well, that's because they're like heavily populated towards metropolitan areas. Yeah, yeah, it's probably the only ma- major the metropolitan. The industrial revolutions, kids. Yeah, like apparently, I mean, apparently Mexico City has a larger metro area um, population than New York City. That doesn't surprise me. I guess I don't know. Um, yeah, the uh, the whole like the Psalm versus the Defenders like thing um like i i felt like it fit pretty neatly into the whole like like nationalism versus globalism yeah debate you know that we have in real life um had some i i I feel like it was a little bit heavy-handed you know with the yeah. ways that hank was like using the same rhetoric yeah he very see. much alluded to the oh yeah it being kind of certain groups yeah yeah um which is a you know, an interesting choice because, like, I can definitely imagine people that would be on one end of the debate in, you know, in, in the real world. Yeah. But then, like, if you introduce, like, aliens that we know nothing about might, you know... Change sides. Have a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's like, I don't think it's a perfect analogy. No, um, but it's a good, he gets the point across because he talks about, like, we shouldn't just put people into categories and yeah yeah oh my gosh i just realized that this is exactly like the setup in the game ingress so ingress was this like location-based game made by niantic the same company that made pokemon go but this was like you know three years earlier or whatever that they that they originally made ingress and it was set up as this like like there was this energy seeping into the world and you know like the source was from some other dimension or whatever and supposedly there was like alien influence on it and so there were two factions in the game one faction which trusted the aliens and wanted to use this energy to like kind of further humankind and then there was uh the other the other faction um you know believed that this was going to be a bad influence that it was going to be our undoing and so they were trying to prevent this energy from being used and 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 in the game uh the two sides kind of battled it battled it out by like trying to capture points in in real life it was it was very much like pokemon go where you had to go to an actual physical place in the world and capture it and then connect that point to other points and it also like parallels hank's book because each of those factions was having to like coordinate with each other with with you know other people on your team in order to you know make the most effective connections possible and so you had like people in various online forums coordinating efforts and trying to you know like forward the co- their own cause and it was it's oh my gosh it's just like the psalm it's wow did hank play this game is did he get some ideas for Ingress? That's so cool. It'll be interesting to see, yeah, like, do we get more details in the sequel about, like, what, like, what was the deal with the Carls, you know? Yeah, like, if he does, what if he just doesn't talk about Carls at all Oh my sequel? god! And he just, like, April May went, in, May went on to live a generic life. <laughs> well, <laughs> Ate Pop-Tarts every day. And then she retired to a, a medium-sized town in Montana. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> That's it. That's the end. <laughs> there you go. There's your book idea, Hank. <laughs> you can credit me. Um, gosh, that would be that would be way too on the nose. Like <laughs> it's just like a pamphlet. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm yeah, man. I wish that I had written more stuff down while I was reading the book because like I can't 
remember a lot of the thoughts and feelings that I had in the moment. Of, yeah, reading it. Maybe I tweeted stuff. (laughs) You did. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, There's definitely two or three tweets about the book right after you finished it and while you're reading it. I definitely remember one thing that I tweeted. It was the, like, within 10, 15 minutes of when I started listening to the book and he got a really, really hearty laugh out of me (laughs) when uh, April was complaining about, like, her boss who couldn't even tell the difference between a a vector and or a raster image. And I was like, ha! Wow, so funny. It was it was very funny to me. Sorry, I have a liberal arts degree. Actually, I don't even have one of those yet. So I don't even I don't even do like visual design. (laughs) I don't, you know, (laughs) next time. Arby's was a thing in the book. <laughs> I just remembered that thanks to my Twitter. See, there you go. Um, yeah, it's... Twitter's finally paying off for you. I, I mean, how do authors do you think make those kinds of decisions about like what kinds of real life brands they're gonna put in a book? I think, what am I hungry for today, and can I get a sponsorship? Because <laughs> I mean, it doesn't. I, I'm almost a hundred percent sure that it wasn't a sponsorship. Yeah, probably not. He's always wants Coca-Cola to sponsor him, but it never does. Um, And also, I feel like Hank is the kind of person who would very intentionally, like, make that... Like, how do you even make that clear in a fictional work that, like, oh, yeah, this is a a product placement, a, you know, a paid-for thing? In the the notes at the bottom, you write, sponsored by Arby's. (laughs) You gotta pay the bill somehow. Oh, yeah. Uh, one other thing from like the very first chapter that was hilarious was um, when April was like making fun of Andy for just being yet another two white guys talking comedy podcast. And I was like, all right, Hank, I see you <laughs> <laughs> making fun of yourself. You have to. No, I did not. I did not have very many helpful tweets for myself. Sorry, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, this should encourage you to tweet more now. What do you think the sequel is going to be titled? Another an ap- absolutely remarkable thing. <laughs> A totally radical item. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't name it at all. It's just blank. Just le- left blank. Just this, left blank. It's symbolism. This... Also, I didn't want to come up with a name. <laughs> what if it's entirely emojis? I'm here for it. That would be fantastic. Yeah. What if he just writes tank green on the top? There you go. What if it's, oh, even better than emoji? What if it's emoticons? Like, what if it's the shruggy emoticon? Yeah. Yeah. What if he titles it Paper Towns? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just... mm. <laughs> Is that allowed? I, I feel, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I feel like there's I feel like there's definitely trademark issues of, no. associated with no. that. I'm trying to think of the other book John Green wrote that says okay okay. What? What's the one where they say okay? I haven't read any of John's books. <laughs> but you knew one of them, the title. Well, yeah, I know the title of yeah, I mean okay. so that there's You can title it Looking for Alaska. There's then. Looking for Alaska, there's um the fault in our stars there's Looking turtles for april all the may. Way, turtles all the way down um an, an abundance of april mays yeah an abundance of april mays <laughs> he should just steal john's titles hey wait a minute no we gotta take this the opposite way like a deficit of april mays <laughs> <laughs> great um copyright 2018 yeah tm 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 <laughs> uh see all we got to do is we got to come up with out with that book before hank does right yeah yeah for sure i was gonna just tweet at him continuously my ideas for book titles but Mm. i guess we can just come out with our own book do you know publishers i feel like no absolutely not okay we can Mm -hmm. amazon publish it yeah 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 that's the way to go actually that that is one thing um about this book that i'm a little bit surprised at is like uh you know hank went through the traditional publishing route which like you know i understand i i I totally understand yeah because like number one his brother's john and so like you know he has an in it's not you know he he's able to make connections there um number two like yes the publishing industry does a lot of work for like publicizing and for distribution and everything um but at the same time i'm like man 
the the mainstream like book publishing industry it does not release anything drm free and it makes me so mad <laughs> so like you know like like i want to be able to take this audiobook that i that i bought and just like you know stick it into my own podcast player so that i can you know like stick it into the queue yeah. with along with all the podcasts that i'm listening to there's no way to do that because like you know technology it, yeah um if i bought the the you know ebook version like it's gonna be drm'd i'm not you know i'm not gonna be allowed to like <laughs> make a copy of it make a copy of it and use it you know like there's good reasons for that to be fair yeah but i mean like a lot of of independent uh you know people who who publish things independently right like either can't be bothered to put drm on stuff because it does take a little bit more effort but also like a lot of people are just like very aggressively against drm and so it's like fantastic that makes me so happy like as a consumer having that trust you know like communicate it like you know i don't trust people no (laughs) no i'm putting the drms on all my stuff i i aggressively (laughs) do tell you what i'll send you a drm free copy of of an yeah. absolutely remarkable thing, fantastic. Yeah, just That's email Hank. <laughs> <laughs> just um, post about it on Discord, and he'll see. I have in the past, like after NerdCon, when I made a, a podcast episode about NerdCon, uh, I emailed him and I was like, "Hey, can I use uh, um, the musical version, the instrumental version of Pants, T-shirt and Jeans?" Okay, yeah, I guessed. Um, like as the theme song for the episode and he did not personally respond to that email his assistant did and she was like yeah totally cool here's a dropbox link to the instrumental version and i was like sweet (laughs) you got connections now yeah (laughs) see that's what i mean like being accessible to the audience there you go what a world we live in (laughs) crazy man it's fantastic those crazy cats i kind of feel bad about the fact that i haven't been active on the discord for an absolutely remarkable thing like since i don't the like i wonder i just wonder what kinds of conversations are going on it gets off topic really fast i lurk there sometimes and the other one other nerd fighter ones Mm -hmm. but like very rarely are they on topic about the book (laughs) okay they were talking about like the jean jacket and whether it was a jean pea coat the other day very important things to talk about great (laughs) then i left (laughs) yeah yeah so i guess i mean that it was definitely like a a good on topic place to be right when the book was coming out and when you were reading it which is nice to talk about people to other people who had also read it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's one of the reasons that i really enjoy like book club style podcasts because it's like oh yeah we are all reading through this book at the same time so we can not only discuss it like, you know, listen to a podcast that discusses it, but also chat with each other about did, the book in real time. Did you join the John Green book club or the book club they made? No, I definitely won't have time to like read those books fast enough. I was like, I don't know if I can commit to this. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to. And if there's a good book, maybe I'll try to read it. But yeah, I I'm having trouble keeping up with my media consumption as it is. I can't add more. I don't um. have a job, and I have trouble keeping up with my media <laughs> consumption. Um, all right, Mary. Correct. Last question: Where can people find you on the internet? You can't. No. Okay. <laughs> totally invisible. One hundred percent. I change my Instagram name weekly, so. Oh wow, that'd I, be pretty intense. I get bored with them, and I'm like, "What should I put my name as this week?" <laughs> Oh, man, that sounds like a nightmare to and me. And then I spend half an hour trying to get, like, a name without, like, numbers and additions to that. Okay. Um, okay. This week, it's Hide the Valuables. Because <laughs> I thought that was amusing. At least you're never going to, like, have the regret, you know, in, in five years or whatever, where yeah. you're like, ugh, that username that I made when I was 14 years old, you know? They were all super lit, but so I'm it's... okay with it. <laughs> But if you've already changed them since then, you know, yeah. many, many, many times. Kind of. Depends on the accounts. Yeah. My Club Penguin account. Haven't updated that in a while. Uh, so I am Ian Arbuck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian Arbuck. Um, and that's pretty 
much it. I do. You can also find him now on MySpace. Yes, you can find me on MySpace now that I have an account there. It's fantastic. Uh, there's probably nothing there. There's going to be some selfies from a really high angle. Be ready. He's going to say roar and oh my XD God. a lot. I'm going to buy you a dinosaur hat. It's going to be great. Be excited. Wait, when you say XD, do you mean like the emoticon, like the, the squinting eyes emoticon that's smiling? Correct. Wait. Okay, good. Okay. I mean, either. Either. It could also mean excited. Like an abbreviation of excited? Yeah. I just, don't accept that. It just depends on who you're talking to and I... how many letters they like to use. <laughs> okay. Second Opinion is a production of the Nexus TV. We are a network of technology-focused podcasts. This episode is released under a Creative Commons license, so feel free to use any part of it that you wish, as long as you link back to the original page, which, again, is thenexus.tv slash SO53. Uh, if you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners, go to our subreddit at r slash thenexustv. You laughing at our subreddit? 100%. <laughs> I will also be commenting on there. Oh, fantastic. After this is posted. <laughs> And if you have the ability to uh, support us financially as we continue to make technology-focused podcasts, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash TV, and you can get some uh, nifty rewards, such as the Fringe episode associated with this episode, where Mary and I talk about a whole bunch of random stuff. Or you can just send me cash. It's cool. <laughs> uh yeah, just, just stuff that into the CD drive <laughs> in your computer. Uh, tweet yeah. at me at Astronator. Yes. My astronaut Twitter account, and I will DM you the address to send the cash or Venmo. We no definitely tech. We definitely need some more space facts from Astronator. So also yeah. tweet at uh, Astronator asking about Anything. Saturn or whatever. Saturn's the only space thing I can think of right now. Wow, that's very sad. The cosmos. There you go. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological convergence. convergence. Tech news is dominated by big announcements with big, bombastic personalities. Developers, 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 developers. Sometimes they make us laugh. Yes, I'd like to order 4,000 lattes to go, please. Sometimes we laugh at them. Courage. Sometimes we're filled with awe. There it is. Whoa! Check that out. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes they throw shade. Toxic hell stew. Sometimes they inspire. Live, learn, and love. They never want us to forget. Remember? That the show's never over because... I got one more thing. Now, it's often difficult to make the journey to see these events live. This is a freaking dirt road! Oh my god! <laughs> but we here at the Nexus TV have got you covered. On our show, Nexus Special, we recap and analyze all the biggest announcements and keynote events in the tech world. So come join us as we explore the brave new worlds that await us. Subscribe to Nexus Special in your favorite podcast player today. <laughs>